Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I'm here with Riesen Mueller's Cruiser Mixty, which is a Bosch-powered cruiser-style e-bike. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the uh, who this bike is for, so I'm going to go through some of the features of the bike, and uh, give you a little bit of a ride test. If you would like to find out more about this bike, or you'd like to try it yourself, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. You can give us a call, send us an email, reach out on Facebook. You can schedule an appointment to try it here in Ladysmith. Uh, it's a beautiful location to try bikes. Uh, you can set up an appointment, and if you're coming from the mainland, we'll even pick you up at the uh, ferry terminal at the airport. Otherwise, we can also bring the bike to you anywhere on uh, Vancouver Island or the lower mainland. And of course, we also ship recent Mueller bikes right across Canada. Great thing about uh, these bikes when we're shipping them is they come in a massive box, almost completely assembled. All you have to do is uh, switch around the handlebars, add the pedals, and you're set to go. So this, as I mentioned, is Riesen Mueller's Cruiser Mixty, and the Mixty suggests that it's a lower crossbar. There is also the regular diamond frame uh, Cruiser available as well. The Cruiser Mixty is available in two colors, black uh, and white and it's available in three sizes. You can also add an optional front rack, and I'll show that to you in a few moments. The regular Cruiser is available in one color, black, also three sizes, and with the uh, Cruiser, the regular Cruiser, because the crossbar is higher, they actually have this beautiful leather look uh, frame bag that is designed to cover the battery and gives you some storage if you wanted to bring your charger, or lunch, or anything along. Uh, and the neat thing about that is not only does it really blend well with the bike and cover the battery, um, but it also allows, well, I guess that is the neat thing, it covers the battery, so if you don't want to people to know you're riding an e-bike, then putting that bag on there really uh, hides the battery as well. So let me cut to a, a video I did earlier of the front rack so you can see what that looks like. The optional front rack for the cruiser is quite large. It's about uh, 27 by 39 centimeters, and uh, it mounts on the stem here. So as you steer or turn, of course, the rack turns with you. And uh, what happens with the light, because of course it would be blocked by the rack, is it just comes down here under the rack, and that's a nice uh, feature to be able to uh, move the uh, light so that you can still access it. And uh, with that large space on there, you can really put a lot up there. You'll just want to watch the weight and keep that down. It's more for bulky items. Okay, so the rack option is really neat. So who is this bike for? Well, if you're looking for a very nice looking, attractive bike, this is a great choice. If you want a comfortable bike, the Cruiser is an excellent option to consider. And if you're looking for a great value, this bike is an exceptional value. So let me walk through why I'm telling you those things. Now, first of all, if you are looking for a mountain bike, you know, this isn't the bike for you. Head over to our website, call us, contact us, and be happy to help you choose uh, a bike for mountain biking. But for every other style of riding, whether you're commuting or, or uh, doing some touring, getting groceries, you want to do mostly pavement, or you do light trails with uh, loose gravel sometimes, hard pack gravel, this is actually a great bike. We do have <coughs> some fairly wide uh, Schwalbe balloon tires on the uh, front here that uh, help to make this a very comfortable bike. But let me back up a little bit and just address that first point that I made of this being a very attractive bike. And really, this is quite a retro look. We've got the, the brown saddle, the leather look grips that are actually a little bit soft and cushiony to hold. So they're really, not only does it look good, but it feels good as well. So those are nice little features. They have even matched the tires with the brown to the grips and to the saddle. <clears throat> and uh, I'll just uh, turn the bike around here and show you on this side, we even have kind of a chrome uh, chain guard that's not only functional, it's going to keep you from uh, getting grease on your clothes, but it also just makes the bike really attractive. So it's a nice looking bike. If you're looking for a, a really uh, attractive bike, this is certainly a choice for you. Let me uh, grab the camera now and I'll walk you through some of the features that make this bike a really comfortable bike as well. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> the saddle is definitely a really nice, comfortable saddle. Um, Recent Mueller's added a suspension seat post to really help smooth out the ride. And with that, you also have the, the grips, which, you know, seem like a strange thing to say make the ride smoother, but they actually seem to have a little bit of a, 
uh, shock absorbing in them when you ride over bumps it, it really doesn't feel that uh, bumpy and of course we have a suspension fork on the front here with uh, 60 millimeters of travel and there is a lockout on the top here if you prefer to lock that out you can and there's also rebound adjustment as well so all of those things really factor in to make this a comfortable uh, bike. If we take a look at the handlebars here you can see that they're quite swept back and that helps to bring you up into a real upright riding position. You're really with this bike you're sitting quite upright gives you a good sense of uh, what's happening around you. Uh, if you've got uh, back or knee issues you're not going to be really bent over because you don't have to reach far to grab the uh, grips here. Adding to the comfort, we've got things like the fenders. We've got uh, a little mud flap here as well to keep you nice and dry when you're riding in uh, poor conditions. Um, the pedals uh, seems like a little thing to mention, but these actually have a little bit of rubber on them, um, and so they're not, you know, they're not metal on the uh, outside that it's going to, you know, cut your shins if you hit them. Um, but they do have the, these little ridges here to help you grip, which is uh, really nice. And uh, we've got the rack, so you can bring along whatever you need with you. And one of the things that I love about this is that Teresa Mueller has even included a built-in bungee. So you don't have to worry about, you know, forgetting to bring bungee cords along. If you stop suddenly and decide to, to buy something you weren't expecting it, you can uh, just bungee that on there. And it's actually a pretty high-quality bungee. Like I said, it's permanently mounted. You just uh, put that on there, and you can adjust uh, here the length of it, so you can put some fairly big packages on there as well. And if you are stopping just for a few minutes somewhere, uh, they have included this Avis um, frame lock here, or we sometimes call it a cafe lock, because uh, you wouldn't want to rely solely on that to keep your bike from being stolen, because obviously somebody could just pick up your bike and put it in a truck. But if you're keeping your eye on it, what happens is this lock comes down, a uh, bar comes through the uh, wheel here, and prevents your bike from being moved. And uh, one of the cool things is that the keys, I'll just show that here to you, um, the same key that opens the lock also uh, is used to lock the battery on. So here's the keys. Look at that uh, recent Mueller, even nice little touch. Gives you the um, a little leather keychain holder. And, you know, speaking of nice little touches, Riesen Mueller assembles all their bikes by hand in Germany. And the quality and attention to detail is really evident when you come and ride these bikes. They're just really well put together. So basically I can put that key in there, turn that, and then I'd be able to move this bar down. And you can see that it kind of goes through the wheel there. And that prevents your wheel from turning. And like I said, that key is also used to remove the battery from the frame because it's locked on there. And uh, speaking of the battery, you can charge it on the bike if you wish. There's a charging flap over here on the other side. Uh, or you can remove it uh, from the bike and bring it inside and uh, charge it from there as well. So uh, the lights also add to perhaps not comfort, but uh, making it a very safe bike. Got a nice big bright light up front here and uh, one on the rear along with some reflectors. And again, to keep you safe, these uh, Schwalbe um, uh, tires, these are the Big Ben, um, have a reflective strip in them as well to really uh, help keep you visible and of course that chrome is quite uh, attention grabbing as well so trying to keep you safe on the road. Um, I mentioned that this was uh, a really good value and let me point out why I think that because you're probably asking yourself you know how is it a good value when it's you know $49.99 and on our website we have some other Bosch powered e-bikes that are less expensive. So what makes this such a good value? Well, first of all, this is actually using Bosch's Performance Line CX. This is Bosch's top end uh, drive system. Uh, so, for example, it gives you more torque, which is important for climbing hills. It gives you more assistance in the sport and tour mode. And it also activates uh, kind of at a uh, more quickly and can operate at a higher uh, cadence, higher RPM. So it's, it's really a very nice upgrade. Usually uh, you only see this on mountain bikes, 
um, but really anybody can benefit from that extra torque for climbing hills and, and uh, so I really like that feature about it as well. As well. Um, continuing on that idea of being a great value, uh, Reese and Mueller's gone with the Power Pack 500 instead of the Power Pack 400 that you'll often see on less expensive bikes. That gives you 25% more range than the 400 watt hour battery, so it's well worth it. And then really the biggest thing that makes this an excellent value is we have the NuVinci 380 continuously variable hub. What that means is that there's no gears, there's an infinite number of gears so to speak. And to uh, adjust your gear ratio, you have this little twister here. And so you can see as I twist it, there's a little icon here, as I twist it this way, it looks like the cyclist is going up the hill. That tells me it's going to be easier to pedal. And as the hill uh, gets easier or I start to go onto flat, I can twist this and you can see that he starts going down because he's, it's getting uh, flatter and so that's harder to pedal. So it's a very intuitive, very obvious how to actually use this. The neat thing is that I'm adjusting this while we're stopped. And so on a regular bike with a cassette chain and derailleur, uh, if you try to shift while you're stopped, you notice as soon as you start pedaling, oh, it's going to not work very well. You're going to get a lot of noise and grinding of gears and you'll have a really hard time starting out. So the great thing about this hub system is that if you need to stop unexpectedly or, you know, if you just, you just you're having fun riding and you're not paying attention and you forget that oh yeah I need to stop I need to gear down before I stop it's not a problem after you stop you can gear down so that's pretty cool you can also of course uh, adjust it while you're pedaling and that's easy to do as well so it makes it very easy to use you don't have to think ahead about shifting you don't have to be worry about being in the right gear one of the things I love is that if you're uh, climbing a hill and the grade is changing as you climb, you can just very easily twist this just a little bit and make minor changes to your cadence, to, that is to how quickly your legs are moving. So that's, that's fantastic. Now from a value standpoint, I'm saying yes, this is a great value and you're thinking, well, I like the, that feature for riding, it's great, but how does that relate to value? Well, for the price that you're paying for this bike, it's exceptional to get a hub like that. But it's also going to save you money in the long run. You see, your chain now is fixed and it's not jumping up and down a cassette and it's not changing angles back and forth. And so your chain is going to last a lot longer. As well, you're never going to have to replace this hub. Whereas with the cassette, uh, after a few thousand kilometers, you're going to need to replace your chain, you're going to have to replace the cassette, eventually you'll have to replace the derailleur, and all of that gets expensive. And perhaps if you value your time, you'll also see that the zero maintenance aspect also saves you money. So if you ride all seasons like I do, after every ride on a bike with a chain and derailleur, if it's been raining or I got into some mud, I take you know my toothbrush and my chain cleaner and I scrub the cassette and I clean the jockey wheels and I clean the chain. And I do that because I want everything to last. If I don't do that, especially if you get sand and grit in your chain, your cassette, it's really gonna wear it down. All of that takes time. The great thing about this bike is when you're done riding, you're done riding. There's no maintenance, there's no adjustments. Uh, if you have a derailleur, you, you have to be careful you don't bang it because it might get out of adjustment. You may have to uh, you know, bring it into a shop and have those adjustments made. This is great because there's no adjustments need to be made. Speaking of adjusting things and zero maintenance, that's one of the themes with this bike is it really is uh, very, very low maintenance. And part of uh, the way that Reese and Mueller's done that is by using hydraulic rim brakes. Now we don't see these that often. A lot of, uh, most of the rest of the e-bikes we carry have hydraulic disc brakes. Now it's important that they're hydraulic because that means I can very easily stop the bike no matter how fast I'm going without having to use you know a whole lot of force in my hands and so that's really important to be able to stop your bike quickly with one or two fingers and so these are although they're rim brakes they are hydraulic and so they're very very easy to stop but the great thing about hydraulic rim brakes is that you really don't have to worry about adjusting them if you have a bike with uh, disc brakes, you may have noticed that occasionally they need to be adjusted and uh, or the pads need to be replaced or things start rubbing. Um, although with rim brakes, you will have to replace the pads 
you generally you don't have to replace them as often as on a disc brake and again you're not having to worry about those kinds of adjustments so overall given that you get you know the Bosch powerful system the 500 watt hour battery the new Vinci drive you get the rack the lights the fenders uh, the suspension fork very comfortable it's actually an incredible value and uh, in terms of the lights you know it is really nice having them run off of the main battery because you don't have to worry about charging them and you also don't have to worry about taking them off if you're running in somewhere because they're permanently mounted to the bike so I really like that feature about it as well now one of the things I haven't talked about yet is the Bosch mid-drive system so I'm going to step you through that if you're familiar with this from my other videos you may want to just skip ahead um, to the uh, ride test but uh, I will kind of point out some of the the details of the Bosch system if you're not familiar with it it is a mid-drive and so what that means is that it's turning your chain rather than a hub motor which would turn the wheel the benefit of that is it's more efficient it uses your battery more efficiently um, it's more natural feeling because when you are powering your bike, you're powering it through the chain here, not through the wheel. And so it feels more natural. The other great thing is that the weight is centered and so it doesn't uh, throw your balance on the bike at all. And the Bosch system especially is very, very responsive. So the Bosch system is basically going to measure how hard you're pedaling, how fast the bike is moving. There's this speed uh, sensor here and how quickly you're moving your legs or your cadence it's going to measure that a thousand times per second so it's basically reading your mind and is going to give you power based on how much power you're wanting so in other words when i turn the display oh, i turn the system on here which is just press and hold the power key i don't have to turn the battery on first when i adjust my level of assistance for example i press plus and move up to eco here that's going to give me 50% of my power. When I move up to Tour, which is what most people ride on, it's going to give me about 120%. And you can move up from there to uh, Sport and up to Turbo. The important thing about it, basically reading your mind, is that you're never going to get too much or too little power. So if you're climbing a hill, maybe you're going up there and you need to do a little bit of a corner at the top so you need power to get up the hill but you don't want too much power and you'll go over the other side because you need to ease off at the top to go around the corner the Bosch system has got you it's not going to give you too much power when you get to the top as soon as you ease off pedaling it'll ease off as well so it's very very responsive it's one of my favorite drive systems on an e-bike uh, and uh, you'll also find that it's very reliable there's no maintenance and uh, it, it's a, a, a great system that's going to last a really really long time also really like the display here. I'll try to wipe off some of the raindrops that are happening here. Uh, from the display, you can see your battery level. You can see your current speed, the current level of assistance. When I'm riding, you'll notice there's actually a little graph that goes up and down here to show me how much it's assisting me. And on the bottom here, you can see we have a trip computer. And so if I press I on the remote here or on the display right here, you can see it cycles through things like a clock. It gives me my maximum speeds so on the way here. I hit 57 uh, kilometers an hour. My average speed, the trip time, that is the amount of time the bike's been moving, my estimated range. And that's a really great feature. It basically looks at how much battery you have left. And then based on your last four or five kilometers that you've gone, how much further could you go? And so that adjusts dynamically based on how hard you're pedaling, the uh, amount of hills, that sort of thing, the wind, and of course the level of assist. So as I increase the level of assist, you can see it decreases the range. And as I decrease the level of assist, it increases the range. And, uh, you know, you can easily expect 60, 70 kilometers on this 500 watt hour battery uh, with a... Um, you know, 170, 180 pound rider doing some hills and with some wind and on tour. Uh, so you get a really long range. And if you need more than that, um, then you can move it down to Eco and uh, you can get, you know, well over 100 kilometers, 100, 150 kilometers. So it's got a really good range. And I just love having that ability to see how much further I can go. So I'm not that worried about it. And we also have an odometer on there as well. And I think I've been through all of the options on the display. We can also control the lights here. If you wish, we can program this for you so the lights are always on when the bike is on. And I do recommend that it makes you a little bit more visible to, uh, to other users of the road. So I think I've covered all of the points that I wanted to show you on the bike. It is an attractive looking bike. Um, 
it's very comfortable and it's a great value when you look at all the features that you're getting for this bike. So if you would like to try it or if you have any questions, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. We'd we'll be happy to help you out. And uh, now I'm going to do a little uh, ride test for you so you get an idea of how well it rides. It's a really nice uh, upright, uh, comfortable position. I like these uh, swept back handlebars. You're not really having to reach uh, far out in front of you. And a very nice upright posture. <clears throat> and I'm really loving the uh, New Vinci uh, system here. You simply give a little twist here to adjust your gear ratio. It's nice when you have a hill that has a variable grade. It's nice being able to make fine adjustments as you go to adjust your cadence for uh, climbing the hill. All right, try some bumpy road surfaces. Here's a little bit of gravel, some potholes, and uh, oh, the front suspension's handling it really well. And I really like the uh, suspension seat post. And the saddle itself is really comfortable. I think these uh, Schwalbe balloon tires also help smooth out the ride. Got a lot of uh, air volume in them. And you can get the pressure down quite low. Anywhere from 35 to 70 PSI. It's probably running a little over 40 right now. Happy with the uh, rim brakes so far. They are hydraulic, which is nice. They've got a fair bit of modulation in them, which is also nice. And uh, one of the things that I try is one hand stopping. As I was going down that hill, I had the signal my intention to turn left. And sometimes it's a little difficult when I need to use both hands on the brakes, but we managed quite well. I'll have to do some experimenting with the tire pressure to see if I bring it up closer to the 70 if I get uh, more speed. on this hill, which is uh, long and steep, I uh, usually move it up to uh, sport or uh, turbo even. Um, but I'm just curious to see on tour, which is uh, 
kind of the setting you use for most of the time when you're on the flat, how uh, hard it is to make it up this hill. And if I move my Vivinci system to the easiest gear ratio, it's really not bad. I'm just doing 10 or 11 kilometers an hour. I'm not having to work too hard, and that's just on the uh, tour mode. Now, fortunately, and part of the interesting experiment is that uh, the Bosch Active Line, the amount of torque available in the turbo setting is the same as the amount of torque available on the tour setting on this Bosch CX performance line. So I'm going to boost it up to turbo, and <laughs> you can see you get way, way, way more power. So I am really glad that uh, Reese and Mueller decided to use the uh, Performance CX line right across all their models here in North America. In Europe, you have different options. And, uh, you know, it does save a little bit of money, but it sure is nice having that power when you want it. Now, it's been a while since I've ridden a bike with rim brakes instead of disc brakes. It's a slightly different uh, braking sensation. I'm not sure how to actually describe it, but uh, they're very adequate. I don't, I'm, I'm quite confident in them. I don't have any concerns about my ability to stop. So here on a flat section, I'm in tour, hitting 30. Not having to work too hard at it and yet you know it's it's really nice enjoyable and a nice upright position it's just it's a really fun fun ride It'd be a nice bike for touring around in enjoying the spring flowers like i am today give it a bit of a boost to make it up this hill Again, it's nice being able to make those fine tuning to my cadence just by twisting a little bit. If you find that it's a little bit difficult to twist, and I don't find that it's too bad at all. I can twist it while I'm pedaling hard. It helps if you ease off your pedaling a little bit, then it becomes much easier to twist. But you can, uh, of course, shift both while you're stopped and while you're pedaling, which can be really useful. For example, if you have to stop at a stop sign unexpectedly, I can shift it there before I start. And now it's much easier starting out. I suppose it shouldn't be unexpected to have to stop at a stop sign. Got a pretty steep hill here. Give these brakes a try. Yeah, we're doing really well. I wouldn't want to use them on a mountain bike where I may need to stop even more suddenly. Ah, big curve, nice steep angle, and uh, one of the nice things about these larger tires is it is easier to hop up over curbs and things like that. The uh, front suspension helps and the suspension seat post helps as well. Oh, and Reese Mueller includes a bell, which is handy for alerting pedestrians that you're coming. of some obstacles that may be in your way in an urban setting such as the 
railway tracks and actually it was very smooth over those. Again, the larger tires help, balloon tires, front suspension, it's very smooth. Actually, I'm going to turn around here and find some gravel to test. Well, the turning radius isn't a problem either. I was wondering about that with the uh, swept back handlebars. Am I going to end up hitting my knees when I turn? But so far, it's not a problem. Now, this particular bike, this is the small frame. So it is the wrong size for me. I should definitely be going with the larger frame. But for doing a ride test video, it's working quite well. Here's a bit of gravel to try out. It's quite bumpy, but uh, suspension fork is smoothing that out pretty well. And actually these grips, they're uh, kind of soft and squishy, but not in a bad way. And uh, that seems to be helping as well. So yeah, really comfortable, no problem with traction. Um, these are moderately wide tires, so I don't have any concerns about, uh, you know, cornering, turning. for that matter. Also doing quite well. Okay, and for the ride back, I've adjusted the uh, camera angle here to be on the uh, handlebars. And we'll try some really, really soggy grass here to see uh, 